Hi everybody, so Heidi here, and this tutorial is going to show you how to sketch flats in Illustrator without touching the pen tool. Yes, this is an amazing trick and strategy that I use to sketch, and let's get started. So you'll see what I have set up here is on the first layer I've got this sketch, uh, excuse me, a photograph of a sweatshirt. And I've got a stroke color of a bright turquoise selected. I've got that selected so that I can actually see as I draw my garment, since the garment is actually in black. I don't want to draw in black. And the tool that we're going to use to draw this is the pencil tool. Now I'm just going to dive in and start drawing and as I draw this I'll talk about how the tool works and how you can use it to sketch. So the pencil tool works differently than the pen tool in that you can draw organically like you do with a normal pencil. So we'll just start with the cowl neck here and I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to trace the cowl neck. Now if you need to release, that's fine. Whoops, my stroke weight is kind of crazy big. Let's bump that down to a one point. Uh, if you need to release while you're drawing, that's absolutely fine. You'll notice that the pencil tool has a couple icons next to it as you draw. Those will change. Those tell you exactly what the tool is going to do. When you see an asterisk, you're going to be drawing from scratch. That's not what I want to do right now. I actually want to reconnect to the path I already started drawing. As I hover over any one of the anchor points, either at the start or the end of that path, you'll see I get a backslash. The backslash means I'm going to reconnect. So once I see that backslash, I'll reconnect and I can continue drawing. Again, as I kind of run out of space on my desk or I just need to pick up and move the mouse, I can do that and then just reconnect. Now you'll also notice as you hover towards the end of the path, you'll see a circle icon. Now this is true if you're in Illustrator CC or newer, the circle icon automatically appears. If you're in CS6 or older, hold the Option or Alt key as you hover towards that last anchor point and the circle icon will appear. You can then release to create a completely closed path. Now again, as I told you earlier, if you see the asterisk next to the pen tool, pencil tool, excuse me, you'll know you're going to be drawing a path from scratch. Alternatively, if you hover close to the path, the asterisk goes away. When the asterisk goes away, you can click and sort of reshape the path. If you drew a portion of it and you're just not happy with how it looks, let's say I just want, uh, I don't really like this wrinkle right here, so I'll hover until the asterisk goes away and I'll click and drag to sort of reshape that portion of the path. This is a great option to kind of come in and add a little bit of extra movement afterwards if you want to do that within your sketch. Now again, you do have to pay attention to this as we hover to draw some of the next lines in our sketch. We want to make sure that we see that asterisk before we start drawing. If I click right here, I'm going to be affecting this path. That's not what I want. I want to draw a path right here from scratch. So I'll just hold the Command or Control key to temporarily grab my selection tool, click off of that to deselect that path. Once I release the Command or Control key, I'm back to my pencil tool and I can draw from scratch right here. So I'll just draw this path and then I'll draw this seam line that I see here. Now that was not what I wanted as I hovered too close to that path which was still connected. It kind of reshaped it for me. So I'll Command or Control Z. I will uh, Command or Control click off of that path. And you just have to be careful that where you end or start your path is not directly on a path that is selected. So unless you actually want to be affecting the path that is selected, chances are you're probably going to want to deselect the path before you draw your next path. All right, so let's draw that there. Now I'll go ahead and draw the rest of the garment. So let's go a little bit faster now. I'm going to draw the bodice next. Uh, I'll zoom out a little bit so I can kind of see some of these lines a little bit more in detail. Oops. Now as I draw different parts of the garment, as I mentioned earlier, I like to be zoomed in or zoomed out a certain portion. As I'm trying to draw sort of longer sweeping paths like on the side seam here, I like to be zoomed out a little bit more. And as I draw more detailed portions like the cowl neck that maybe have a little bit more uh, ripples and wrinkles on them, being zoomed in a little bit closer can be easier. Now I'm drawing with a mouse. Uh, I use a magic mouse which works really well for me. You can use a Wacom tablet if you like to draw by hand. That's a great option. I would just not suggest that you use the trackpad on your laptop computer. It can be really hard to do this on a trackpad. So either a mouse or some type of drawing tablet works really well. Our bodice looks great. I'll Command or Control click to deselect from that. And I'll draw this next sleeve. Again, I'm probably just going to zoom out quite a bit 
so I can draw this in one nice sweeping path. And again, we can always go back and edit this if it doesn't come out right. One of the great features of Illustrator is the ability to continually change and reshape our artwork. Again, that kind of went a little bit off track in the underarm there, so I'll just reshape that and reconnect there to create a closed path. And then we'll draw this ribbing here. And I'm actually going to pull this out a little bit. I don't want it to be so close to the body uh, so that the sleeve actually looks like it's a little bit separate. And I didn't actually reshape that, so let's just make sure we have this. Hover over the path until the asterisk disappears. There you go. Okay, now let's take a look. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the ribbing at the body hem. And I'm just going to be a little bit sloppy with this because I'm going to use the stacking order to arrange the objects and kind of hide things behind others. So let's go ahead and fix a couple things. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to select everything, the cowl neck, the bodice, the sleeve, and the hem here. I don't want these seam lines that I've got. I only want to select the paths that are closed paths that actually emulate an actual portion of the garment. So the cowl neck, the bodice, the sleeve, so on and so forth. I'm going to give those a white fill color. And this is where I'll start to rearrange the stacking order of some of my objects. I know that I want the uh, ribbed portions to be in the back, so object arrange, send to back. And I want my cowl neck to be in the very front, so I'll select all of that and I'll just choose object arrange, bring to front. All right, so that looks pretty good. And the other thing is I do want my sleeve to be behind the bodice, so I'll send that to the back. All right. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect this sleeve over to this side of the garment. So I'll just choose Object Transform, Reflect. You could draw this other sleeve from scratch if you want. I'm just going to copy the one I already have drawn because I think it looks fine and I don't mind if they look exactly the same on both sides. Once I have this open, I make sure the preview is on. I do want to reflect vertically. Instead of hitting OK, I'll go ahead and hit Copy. That will reflect it and make a copy at the same time. I'll drag this over to this side until it's about in the right position. And I might need to do a little bit of fussing here at the shoulder point to make sure that that uh, sort of looks nice and runs into the other path um, nice and smoothly. I'm actually going to tilt this a little bit just to have the sleeve kind of coming out a little bit further away from the body. And let's just zoom in here. And if I want to change this at all, I'll grab my pencil tool. I'll make sure this path is selected. I'll hover again until my asterisk goes away. And now you can see I was able to draw that and kind of connect it a little bit more nicely with the bodice path. All right, once that's done, I'm just going to add a couple more cool details that will make your sketch come to life a little bit more. Let's go ahead and turn off the first layer that we have and let's uh, change all of our strokes to be black. Again, I traced with turquoise because my garment was black and visually it was a little bit easier to see what I was doing. So I would probably have some highlights and shadows in the cowl neck here, so I'll go ahead and draw those with the pencil tool. I'm going to make sure I'm drawing with no fill color. I want these only to have a stroke. And I want to choose a, uh, let's hide those so we can see our swatches a little better. I'm going to choose like a light gray to do this. So I'll just kind of draw some organic style lines in here. Um, not even really style lines, but just shadows and highlights and lowlights that'll help give a little bit of dimension to the cowl neck. And I'll go ahead and with one of those selected, I can just choose select same uh, stroke color. Once those are all selected, I'm going to come over to my stroke panel and I want to choose a different width profile from the bottom. So this is a really cool trick. I like width profile number one and you'll notice what that does is it has the stroke go from thin to thick to thin. So that adds just a little bit of softness to those style lines, um, excuse me, those shadow and highlight lines in the cowl neck. All right. The last thing I want to do is um, draw a thick outline around the border of my sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and select my entire sketch. Now one thing you need to make sure before you do this, any of the shapes that are closed paths, meaning the sleeve, the bodice, the entire outline of the cowl neck, these open paths that emulate the seam lines and these highlights and shadows do not have to have fill colors, but the closed paths that make up the rest of your garment do have to have a fill color in order for this next trick to work correctly. 
So you don't have to manually draw a new path around the entire sketch in order to create a thick outline. We're gonna do this with the appearance panel. The first thing you need to do is make sure your sketch is grouped. So I'll come up to object, group. Once it's grouped and I know that every portion of my sketch has a fill color, it can be white, it can be any color you want, it just has to be a fill color. I'm gonna come up to window, appearance. From the appearance panel, I'm gonna click on the drop down and I'm gonna choose add new stroke. By default, it adds a stroke to everything in my sketch. For purposes of uh, really obvious demonstration, I'm gonna bump this up to a really high value. So let's say like four points. And you'll notice it added a thick outline to everything in my sketch, which looks terrible, is absolutely not what I want. So what I can do is with this garment selected, I wanna take this stroke and I have to click somewhere on the layer where I don't see any words or dialogue fields. I have to click somewhere right over here where there's just a little bit of blank space. I'm gonna click and drag this underneath the word contents. Now what I'm doing is I'm applying a four point stroke around the contents of this entire group, which is essentially around the contents of the entire garment. And you'll notice now that the stroke only goes around the outline of the garment. So again, I can come in here, I can always bump this up to be thicker if I want. If you're getting any weird sort of sharp corners, you can avoid that by coming in and choosing a round join. That will help kind of soften any of the sharp jagged corners you may be getting. And for demonstration purposes, let me just go ahead and show you what happens if you don't have a fill color in a certain portion of the garment. So using my direct selection tool, I'll select this sleeve here. I'll go ahead and take the fill color off and you'll notice the thick outline doesn't really look the way I want it to look. So again, if you're getting a result, a result like that, chances are you just need to add a fill color and you'll be all done. So a few quick tricks to sketch with the pencil tool. You can always come back and edit the paths, add some more dimension and reshaping, add these great highlights and lowlights by using the width profile at the bottom of the stroke panel, and last, add a thick outline to your sketch using the appearance panel in a couple clicks. Thanks for watching, you guys. My name is So Heidi. If you like what I'm doing, please check out my website at SoHeidi.com and sign up for my email list. I send out tons of great content, free tutorials and downloads, stuff that you do not see here on YouTube, and I would love to have you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.